So, good morning everybody, it's Jillian. So I figure I kind of get sort of back into the swing of things because mine as well, right? And I am taking care of the things that I wanted to take care of, which is basically purge my office of all this crazy paper because saving all this paper is just really a fire hazard more than anything else. Mostly everything out there is digitized and so there's no need to be saving everything under the, under the sun. And so, you know, when you think about purging your house and purging your body and purging, you know, your social life relative to what it's doing for you or to you, it's all the same thing. You're purging out old, old, old memories that don't even are not, don't even really have a serve a purpose anymore. You, when you think about it. I mean, how often do you keep bank statements? How often do you keep old statements and, and all that? And so it's it's um, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while, but just really hadn't found the time and the energy. But yeah, this uh, last couple days, like yesterday, I needed to take the me time. I needed to because I still had I was still missing some real good sleep, um, obviously missing some nutrition um, and needed to just wind down and relax for a minute because yeah I mean the last month was pretty aggressive and you don't realize how aggressive something is until your body finally is able to relax and sit through the experiences and that's you know what the whole J world is about is where you're able to just cut down all the chatter cut down all the the things that that are distracting you from you and face the demons. And so I know we had, on February 3rd, we had some kind of chemical leak over there in East Palestine, and that's, they're, on, they're east of us, um, about a couple hours east of us. And that was, what, last, a couple, like about a couple, like a week and a half ago. I mean, we're on February 14th, it's February 3rd. And so I don't imagine that that's, you know, that that cloud, that, gas cloud didn't make its way all over Ohio in a span of who knows a couple days and is also affecting people. Um, I know people are saying they're feeling stuff, but how do you really know if that is really affecting you or if it's a frequencies or if it's your predisposed issues? When you think about it, everything comes down to your predisposed issues that are being triggered by either a new um, element or an aggressive element in the atmosphere or even a frequency in the atmosphere that is waking up the demons. And so no matter what, you have to deal with your predisposed issues. And even if it's a, a gas cloud or a frequency or even an aggressive virus that you've been exposed to, if you don't deal with your predisposed issues, it won't matter what triggers your issues because you have to still deal with it. Okay, you have to deal with the weaknesses in your body and you have to feed those weaknesses. You have to rest. You really <laughs> must rethink the remedies and the pills and the surgeries world, but that's something that everyone's going to have to deal with on their own. But in, in my world, you know, I've never had to deal with, with surgeries and I was never really on any kind of uh, like drug therapy. So I didn't have too much to purge out, but... When you are exposed to a dying animals, um, when you think about it, like I'm actually come to terms with whatever happened the last month, when you're, when you're exposed to a dying animals demons, they do transfer, they do transfer and they do jump. And since I was definitely trying to turn that situation around, I know I was exposed myself to whatever my dog had internally that was coming out. And so, so I felt the muscle pains. Let me tell you, I felt muscle pains this this last month. I mean, and it, it could have been attributed to just the fact that I was using different muscles, going up and down the stairs every hour, losing sleep. But when you're waking up stiff after you've already gone through that adaptation, because how, I mean, when, you, when it takes a month for your body to adapt, and I was feeling great. But towards the end, like of last week, when my dog finally had to, to go over the rainbow bridge, I guess, um, my muscles were acting up again. They were so freaking sore. It was like, like I could feel like, again, like I had the shooting pains in my wrists and the shooting pains in my hands. 
And, you know, I definitely had, you know, a little bit of diarrhea, you know, the last couple of weeks when the frequency, especially when it was 66 degrees, like on a Wednesday before, actually last Wednesday, um, it, the frequency shifted and, you know, and then diarrhea, just like that. It was the release process that was just so exponential that I had diarrhea. So did my husband. Um, so him and I are actually experiencing the same kind of things because now I'm finally up to his level. I can handle the frequencies. I, I can deal with stuff and deal with the pain and come out of it without taking any medication. Though he may have to take, he, he may have taken like Tylenol or something for pain, but I don't take anything for pain. I just let it do what it has to do. If I have to throw up, if I have to do diarrhea, if I have to sweat, if I have to release the demons the way I do in my book, I do that because I know I have to help my body get rid of the, these these crazy little microbes that when you allow them to come in for whatever reason, they will want to stay in and they are very, they're, they're extremely stubborn and they want to find a host and you have to be the one to purge out those parasites. And I'm not saying that, that you know how to target the parasites because you don't target parasites in your body. Your body knows what is parasitic and what is needed to keep everything going because you're 69 trillion microbes. And if you don't know that you're 69 trillion microbes, then you're going to think everything is parasitic in your body and you're going to attack your body, which people do. And I can't tell them not to. I can't say that they have to recharacterize how they go about purging out their demons without taking away their own intelligence. And so, you know, your body knows what is parasitic and your body knows what it's not parasitic. And you have to then know how to, to, to deal with your body correctly so you're not stopping its natural processes and destroying yourself simultaneously. So... And so anyway, so I, so this weekend, you know, I was like, like a zombie this weekend when you think about it, even though I was able to be up at four in the morning with my husband, cause he gets up at four in the morning to do his trucking stuff. And I was up, I didn't have to, you know, sleep in or anything on, on Sunday after all that stuff happened as far as my, my animal. And, you know, we went to breakfast, we took care of stuff, went to the Humane Society and, and just closed up that chapter. And then we went to the, I needed to get a drink. And so we went to the gas station and I didn't, you know, I, I get out of the car to go buy the drink and I come back and I, I thought that was my husband's car. I walked into some stranger's car, I'm like, holy shit. And I'm just like, what the hell am I just, and I just, it just didn't even dawn on me to think about just looking at where I was going. And, and so, yeah, when you see another black, you know, Chevy or black Dodge Ram, you're just like, you know, you assume it's yours if you're not paying attention. And so I was kind of in a zombie state. <laughs> And so, you know, so Sunday, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening was when I just felt like I was dragging ass and my husband was just energized and I was dragging ass. And so I knew I needed to take Monday to completely just eat, relax and, and, and just, just deal with feeling whatever pains I was feeling and sleep. Like sleep is so fucking important. I'm telling you. I didn't realize to what extent I was damaging myself for not sleeping, but I was not going to let my animal just die in vain and I was going to do everything I can to get her through. And so I was willing to sacrifice myself for my animal when you think about it, because how long can you go without sleep? How long can you actually get up every single fucking hour and then just hope that you can catch a few, you know, minutes or an hour in between each, you know, thing? I mean, it seems kind of ridiculous when you think about it. Why would you do that to yourself? But hey, you do whatever you can for, for the things that you love. Even if it's crazy, even if it's, it doesn't make sense to you, if if that's not what you would do. But I was willing to do that. I was willing to go through this. I was willing to suffer for my animal and deal with whatever. And so I, you know, I, I had to deal with the last couple of days of now purging that out and fixing myself from that intentional damage that I did. Unbeknownst that that was what was going to happen that I was going to feel the pain of the viruses in me. Because yeah, again, you know, animals and humans, when they're at, towards their last moments, they are releasing viruses. They're releasing a bunch of stuff. The body is deteriorating and it's releasing. And anyone in that vicinity will catch whatever is releasing and it will either metastasize and stay in you, or you'll, you'll be, you know, the kind of person like in the J world, that will find a way to release those type of demons and assimilate as well. And so I feel amazing today. It took me two days. Yesterday I was releasing so many demons, like Sunday night, really like 11 o'clock, I was releasing demons, Monday morning releasing demons, and then sleeping all day yesterday. And then today I was releasing demons early this morning and even late this morning. 
and now I feel actually relatively normal. Like when I when I stand up in the shower after releasing demons, there is no pain in my joints like there was. Um, I'm telling you, it, it may take a couple days at once you deal with your predisposed issues when you have been exposed to something that was really aggressive and your body did react to it. Because I mean, I could, in a lot of ways, I mean, I don't really know what fibromyalgia feels like because I've never been diagnosed with it, but I could tell, I can so kind of understand what it's like for a person to deal with daily muscle pains I and feel the, the just like the stiff person syndrome. Like I understand what it feels like because I experienced some form of that, okay? And so, and, and that's probably what my dog experienced as well, was the stiff person syndrome, stiff animal syndrome, whatever. But I felt it in my joints, in my leg joints, in my arms, in my back too, in my fingers, and even the rashes that were on my, that were like in between, like this was opened up, like this during this last, towards the last couple of weeks, this was all opened up and it was all crusty and it was sore. And this was starting to scab up and it was open too. Um, but that finally, my, my, my immune system finally healed that. Um, and there was, and I, and I would get like these little weird circles, like it looked like they were little bug bites on my hands. Like I was being bitten by something. Okay. The last couple weeks. And so, yeah, I knew I, I had, was exposed to microbes that were attacking me. And that's really what the demons are are microbes that the body is having to deal with. They're like, they're in a fight and you can see the fight, the war, when you see the different welts on your body, whether they're like a pin, a pin cushion or a, like a pin, top of the pin size of it or something larger. Okay. And so, you know, and, and you, and, and I don't put anything on it. I just, I don't even put salt water on it. I just let them express. Okay, because I know that I have an immune system. All I got to do is feed it, release the demons in any way possible that I know that is strategic or that is naturally strategic. Because um, everything you do with your hands and all that stuff is natural. Okay, anything you bring into the body that's so aggressive is only to catalyze, but it's not supposed to stop. So um, food should never be used as medicine in my world. And so... I do everything when you think about it naturally. I don't bring in aggressive elements. I don't bring in even the J juice. That was only in the beginning of the J world to wake up my demons and then I deal with it. Okay? I preempted my own healing process. People don't want to do that. And so they overuse the J juice and they cure themselves and then they end up having breakthrough infection and they can't handle it. Or, or people wait for the environment to bring stuff up. And by that time, it'll be too late for a lot of people when they allow, when they wait for mother nature to do it because they've used cures for such a long time. Okay. And when you've used cures for such a long time, there is no telling, there's no telling when the end is going to be for you. And it could be sooner because in this environment, it is really aggressive. And we have so many things going on with the wars, with people shooting each other, with train derailments, and now we have potentially tainted water supply, fish and animals and, and pets are actually dying because of what's going on. And you seriously have to be, you have to release those demons. So that way, when you get exposed to something like tainted water or tainted food, that your body is strong enough to assimilate to that demon that, that's going to be formed from that exposure and release it and regenerate simultaneously. And what's going to happen, people are going to be feeling disease and cancer and chronic illness because of those exposures, because you still have your overcapacity. The reason why you have cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders and morbidly obese or completely underweight is because you have not released the demons. Your overcapacity and the body is trying to push it out and people stop it. They're taking the the anti-vomit medication. They're taking anti-diarrheals. They're taking anti-parasitics. They're taking anti-inflammatories. And when you're trapping that shit in your body, what do you think is going to happen the next time you get exposed to something aggressive? Your body won't be able to handle it and you won't survive that next exposure. And that is what's going on. And that's as scary as hell when people are taking medications continuously every single time they get an aggressive symptom from a new frequency. Because that's exactly why COVID keeps coming around for many people is because 
They never dealt with the last frequency correctly and they kept compounding it with more medication, more surgeries, more remedies. At some point, a frequency is going to come in and you won't be able to cure it. You won't survive it. That's the scary part of what's going on. But can you tell people that? No. So I only say it on my Facebook and I just leave it where it is and I tell you my journey. And when you're able to release the demons easily, when you're able to recalibrate and you're able to, to deal with your predisposed issues, the pain of losing something, the pain of being exposed to something, the pain of any kind of change, whatever it is, I don't care what it is, it will be easier and you will get through it faster and it's not going to plague you. You will not be revisiting the past that much at all. You'll acknowledge it when it needs to be acknowledged, but it's not something you're going to be shoving down anyone's face, especially your own. You're not going to torture yourself with all the crazy memories. Because I think when people do bring up the past all the time, it's that they haven't, they, they haven't really come to terms with, and there's a lot of guilt behind it. I have no guilt behind whatever I've done because everything came from obviously uh, a respect, um, obviously a love and who knows? And, and something, yeah, respect and love, that really what, what comes down to it. So I have no guilt, so I have no reason to shove that situation down everybody's face and mourn it because there's no reason to, I've mourned it. It's done. It's done. I'm on to the next thing. And I've learned a lot of things from that situation. So in the future, way in the future, I couldn't tell you when, when I'll then re reevaluate how I'm gonna, going to go about doing anything when it comes to another thing's life. It's easy to take care of your own life. Yes, not necessarily, but it's better at this point to take care of yourself and something else unless, I mean, people are primed to deal with death because they've dealt with it. I've never really dealt with death, so that's not something that I was used to. If you are, okay, fine. But again, you really got to take care of yourself first before anything else um, because you really got to survive this. Like, seriously, if you don't take care of yourself, how are your animals and your kids and anyone that's dependent upon you, how are they going to survive if you're not even around? And that's what it comes down to. That that There's no two ways about that. You have to save yourself before anything else. And so, you know, some of us are caught right now in the middle of the old world and the new world. I just released the old world. And it was pretty aggressive the last couple of days, releasing the old world, when you think about it. And so, you know, so my husband and I, we were talking about just, you know, our future and really the future is wide open. When you think about when you're taking care of something that is dependent on you, you actually have no freedom. You have no freedom really. I mean, you do and you don't. Um, I mean, people do, but not really. It's, it's a different kind of freedom. Okay. But this is by far a very different freedom because again, you know, back in 2015, we were just about a year where we were away from, um, in-laws and, and what do you call it? Um, neighbors that are like right above you. And so we, we were like very short amount of time where we were on our own for a minute because my husband started a new job in 2015 and then he, he, he took on a best friend during that time and then he took on sugar at that time. And it was like nonstop of having people around and all of their drama, whatever it is, ever since 2015, when you think about it, nonstop, just having, now that we're finally, now we're in our early, like we're in our fifties and think about it. My husband will be 48 pretty soon. I'm 49. So we're about a year apart, but I'm going to round up because that's exactly what I need to do is round up. But you know, in our fifties, now it's like the empty nest. Now it's paying attention to ourselves. Now it's paying attention to our life and what we want to accomplish with, with the rest. And I, and I know he, in a lot of ways, I know he wants another animal, but I don't, I'm like, we're not going down that road. If we're going to get another animal, if at all in the future, we're going to have to have a different house. This is not going to be the house for an animal. This is not a house for an animal at all. I would have to have a single, a single level floor with, rooms next to, you know, an, like an actual sliding glass door to a bedroom or something. Or like my old house in Saratoga when I, where I grew up, we had a sliding glass door to the, to a master bedroom. That would be the only where I would have, you know, in case I had to go down this road again. And not that I'd ever wanted to for, for a whole while because this was just too traumatic. But that would be the only way for me to have an animal is we, they would have a doggy door, an enclosure, and then a sliding glass door to a master bedroom because I will not go through the, what I went through again. This was insane. 
but I was willing to deal with it. Okay. And so we're not going to move anytime soon. It's crazy, you know. So now it's just enjoying what we have right now and and getting our shit in order. Like I have to get this freaking office in order <laughs> and get these things. <laughs> There's so much paper. It's insane. And so and that's what I wanted to accomplish. And so what, what, what the, what's the whole takeaway in all this is that when you finally deal with your predisposed issues, like literally finally deal with it, then the adaptation evolution becomes easier. It becomes easier and easier and easier. And you will not have to rely on using food as medicine. Food will just be food. You will not have to rely on the medical, on the holistic, on any remedy. And you will, t you will set up your life where you will take the time if you need to deal with an evolution without worrying about somebody telling you that you shouldn't sleep or you shouldn't do this or you shouldn't do that or you got to be out there and do this. Like you will, you will find a way to make sure that you come first because that's who's going to save you is you and <laughs> nobody else. There is nobody out there in any politics, religion, or science, or remedy, or medical, or holistic, or osteo, whatever, is going to save you. Nobody out there can save you. You can only save yourself. And that's really the main takeaway. And there is no one to blame out there. That's the other side of it. Since there's no one out there to save you, there's no one to blame out there for any of your issues. People do because that's how they get absolution. But in, in all reality, you are the one that put yourself in this position to have to blame or have to, to feel like you need someone to save you. And when you put yourself in a position of depending on somebody else to blame or to save you, you're not going to survive this next world because you'll refuse to take any kind of personal responsibility. And so I have taken responsibility for whatever I've done it whatever I've been through the last eight years 40 years was all my doing and I'm willing to evolve and change and recalibrate and figure out how to be even better and more strategic and how to go about doing things should I want a certain lifestyle and that does take a lot of reflection a lot of pain and a lot of remodifying the lifestyle and the belief systems that I held so dear for so many years. And so that's the takeaway in all of this. And so that's what's available for you if you ever choose to, to take on that challenge. And otherwise, then, you know, we just watch people go through their processes. And we can't say anything to them about what they do or what they do not do. It's none of our business. We absolutely have no control and we have no say in what people do or do not do. And so if you want to be a representation of your lifestyle, your belief systems, post it on your Facebook. And then those who observe will figure out what lifestyle or belief system is going to match their situation the most. Because not everybody's going to do what I'm doing. Some people can't. They're too far gone. And I'm sorry that you're too far gone. But I'm speaking to those that have a chance. And if you don't have a chance, then don't follow me because I'm going to offend the fuck out of you. And I, I apologize for that. For swearing but that's what happens is when people don't have a chance to do what I'm doing they will be offended and then they will defend their way of doing stuff and think that's the only way but my way isn't the only way their way isn't the only way we have choices now you just gotta figure out if you can handle the choices that you're made that you're making all right bye